Hello, Clarys. I mean, friends. Hi, friends. Welcome back on another Tuesday. Today, I want to talk to you about my sewing surfaces. Many of you know that I just moved into my new sewing space and had to make a couple of purchases in order to make myself feel a little more comfy. My last table that I sewed on was actually quite large and a little too tall for the space that I'm in right now. So I had to look for a new table to sew on and I went on quite a journey and looked at several different options before settling on this little beauty that I have right here. I will explain to you where I got it from, what my thought process was when I purchased it, how much it cost me, and the things that I like about it. I'm Nye with Deli and Mac. Come along, friends. <laughs> So glad you found me again. So let's talk about first the things that I considered before purchasing a sewing table. The first thing is the size of this space. I knew that in this space I was going to have to get certain things positioned certain ways because I knew that I was going to be making videos for you. So <laughs> I had to get a desk that I could fit on this wall in my office that would catch the light from the window. In addition to that light, I also added four pop lights to the ceiling so that I would have plenty of light to film in or take photos if I needed to. I also opted to get a white table because white tends to reflect more naturally on me than say yellow. So hopefully in this space with it being white and keeping it white, cause I'm a clumsy girl. <laughs> I like this film things. Hopefully, you know, that will work out in my favor in the end. I had to think about my budget. Hmm. How much money do I have? And how much do I want to allocate to a desk set up? Where was I going to set up this table? What exactly did I plan to do on it? So one, I wanted to be able to work on my computer. It was a little frustrating in the other space because my computer was on the other side of the room. So I would have to constantly get up from the sewing space, go across the room, work on the computer to fix maybe a projector issue with the sizing or whatever, or to read instructions on a pattern. Now, can you imagine how long it would take you if you had to get up and walk a few feet to look at one instruction and then come back. And now listen, I'm gonna be honest with you, okay? Half the time when I would walk to the computer to get those instructions and come back, I done already forgot what I was supposed to do. And I was mad at myself for it. It's not your struggle, that's mine. <laughs> and I'm kind of used to it, so I try to find ways to work around it. And this is one of the ways. Having my computer where I sew is so important to me. Another thing I knew I wanted to do at my table is I wanted to be able to sew with all three of my machines. In the other space, I had my serger and my sewing machine on one side of the table, and then all the way at the end, I had my cover stitch, which I had to walk around the table to use my cover stitch. I'm lazy. I don't wanna do it. Sue me! Okay. <laughs> so I really wanted to be able to have like this little corner space where I can wrap my machines around and not have to actually get up to do more sewing. I also wanted to be able to have a space where I could put my heat press because I knew I was going to be doing some sublimation and I wanted to be able to do that sublimation in the same area. You've already seen the whole table anyway, but I'll probably still put a picture because you know how I am. We're friends. We've been hanging out for a long time now. Y'all already know how I am, <laughs> right? So. First thing is the size of my space. The second thing is my budget. The third thing is my setup. Make sure that I have room for everything that I want on my desk. I also wanted to consider durability because sometimes, like my last video with that fold-out hobby table, we don't get the durability that we would like for the price that we would like. And so sometimes you have to balance the amount of dur durability you're going to get for what's in your budget. Now, these tables were in my budget, uh, so I was very happy to have found them online. Assembly. I'm a do-it-yourself kind of girl, and a lot of times, I just want to get my thing together and move on with my life. Usually, I will look into the assembly of something because I will use my toes, I will use my ankles and knees and elbows to put something together all by myself. Because I want it when I want it. Am I right? 
You just want to sew. And that's how I felt. However, I got really lucky because when putting together these desks, I definitely needed some help. And my husband came up in his pajamas, God bless him, to help me put this table together. All right, moving on. I went to Ikea first and I tried to find a table at Ikea. I actually found several that I really, really liked, but they were out of stock because of the pandemic, everybody working from home. So I went online and I went to overstock.com. I found two desks that I really liked. The Echo Credenza by Kathy Ireland. It was pretty affordable, it fitted in my budget, and I was a happy girl. Here I am going ahead and taking the box and opening everything up. There was a plethora of styrofoam, paper sheeting, cardboard that I had to deal with. Uh, my cat came and sat with me a few times. I tried my best to put it together myself with my knees, my elbows, my teeth, my earlobes. <laughs> I used every appendage I could to try and get this table together. But luckily, my husband came and he rescued me. He came and uh, helped me to flip the desk over and to tighten the top down to the base of the table. Now you can see that the table isn't really all that difficult to put together. The hardest part was actually getting all that cardboard apart. There are some positives to this table. One being, it doesn't shake. I love that it's clean lines. It has the sleekest look, and the surface of the table isn't the kind of surface where if you get water on it or steam, it's gonna like bubble up. I like that I can drink my coffee on this table, and if I happen to spill it, it wipes clean no problem. I like that it comes with a spot behind the desk where I can route my wires if necessary. <laughs> I have wires for every desk. I don't like so much that it takes two people to put the table together. I tried to put it together by myself, you saw me. And at the very end, my husband had to come in and help me flip the table because it was just too heavy to do it by myself and it would have fallen apart. Another thing that I don't really like about it is that maybe I'll call a friend. Hey Nancy, what is the name of that screwy thingamabob that um, goes underneath? Don't get mad at me, girl! What is the name of the screwy thing that goes under the desk, please? Okay. Thank you! Bye, Nancy. Okay, so that's what it's called. <laughs> I really love this construction method where you have a hole, you take a joint connector nut, you put it in the hole, and then you use a binding post screw to put into the joint connector nut. You turn it and it pulls the two wood pieces closer together. Although I like the method, uh, for this desk I had to do it multiple times because sometimes this, the bolt would not catch. This is actually two desks. You can get either the credenza, which is straight, all by itself, or you can get the L-shaped desk all by itself. Now it's called the Kathy Ireland Echo Credenza, the Kathy Ireland Echo L-shaped desk. At the moment, I believe they're sold out on overstock.com, so I'm super happy that I was able to get it when I got it. If they come in stock and you're looking for a sewing table, I definitely would recommend this. It has enough depth for me to sew. Now we're gonna talk about the elephant in the room. My brows. Listen, I know you have probably been watching this entire video and thinking to yourself, Nye, why do your eyebrows look like Frosted Flakes? Okay. So over the past few years, I have drawn my eyebrows in with the eyebrow pencil. And I know some of you can probably relate to that because you have maybe gaps or missing spaces. I had, um, I have thyroid disease and so sometimes my eyebrows will just kind of really thin themselves out to the point where I almost can't even find the other half of my eyebrow and then I'm like this. Sometimes I actually um, don't have hairs at the end. So I went and got microblading. I know this is not sewing related, but I'm on here with these crazy looking eyebrows and I feel like I owe you an explanation. Uh, microblading is basically when they tattoo color into your eyebrow area so that you don't have to fill it in with an eyebrow pencil. So I did that and now today I'm on day six. Day six is flaky time. So the skin where they impregnated with color is kind of wanting to fall off. So that's why my eyebrows look a hot mess today. Hopefully by next week when we do a video, 
I will actually have like normal looking brows. I vacillated between wearing sunglasses and just not showing you my face at all because I couldn't wear makeup and I couldn't, essentially I couldn't do anything with my face. So hopefully you will love me as I am with my flicky brows and still be my friend. Hmm. Let's see how many of y'all come back next week to see what's up with my brows. No. <laughs> Please don't touch my brows. But I'll be back next week and you'll see what they look like. Um, thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope that you learned something about this table that you liked. I hope that uh, if you have this table, you also like it the way I like it. Anyways, I hope you had a good time this week. If you have a second, go ahead and make some comments, like, subscribe, whatever, you know, come back next week. I'll be happy to see you next Tuesday. I hope that you have a glorious day. I hope everything you sew this week is your favorite thing ever. Sew the things. Yes. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>